Hello everybody. Every year Joss and I go to the Australian Model Railway Association exhibition at the Claremont Showgrounds in Western Australia. And um, in the last few years there's been some live steam displays out the front. I really love this shit. Uh, you basically need to build these things yourself. Um, obviously there's components and things you can buy, get off the shelf, uh, which makes the job easier, but generally these guys engineer this. Just, just look in here. Look at all that mechanical marvel. It's hard not to admire this. There was three of these stationary engines out the front. Um, I almost, almost don't want to call them a model because they're big. They're big enough to do stuff. Look at the size of this thing. Um, the things that these are models of would have been used before the age of dieselene on a farm, pulling stuff around or driving, just park it up and drive machinery with it like a threshing machine or a hay baler or something. They all actually run on coal so they have that wonderful sulfur smell that a steam train emits. I'm assuming it's not an oil burning steam train because there are some of those. Um, and you can see it's hot. Nobody burned themselves as far as I can tell, but there's the coal in there. There's a fire in there somewhere. And um, steam shooting out. It's all goodness. Inside the hall, the first thing we came across was um, some double O gauge, which is sort of the standard stuff people have with their model railways. And um, there were there was a flying saucer. Now this is SN three and a half scale, which is basically using double O gauge track, but rescaling everything above the track to make sense if you were in Western Australia. This is the rails here. You imagine the rails are three foot six apart instead of four foot eight and a half, which is the rest of the world. Well large parts of the rest of the world. So all of this stuff here can't be bought really, it's basically got to be built. That little loco going across the level crossing there, someone made that. It wasn't bought in a box. Um, I dare say some of the bits of it were. And here we have Jay Kwan with one of her favourite things which is narrow gauge. All through Wales and other places where, you know, things needed to be tight and windy or steep. Um, difficult to build normal standard gauge track. This stuff's wonderful as well. I wouldn't mind betting a lot of this stuff has been scratch built, like built by the person who's displaying it. Um, you can see the track is very narrow. Um, if you go out to Bennett Brook at Whiteman Park, there's a bit of narrow gauge type stuff like this out there. And this is an interesting display because this guy's mashed up N scale or gauge and HO. So they're different. You can see there's a tiny track running around the inside with little people and bigger tracks on the outside with slightly bigger people. This would probably tilt some people's mind. Here we have like all the neighbours who are arguing about whose washing is the best colour. I love these little town scenes. This is some more SN 3.5. Um, this is Karagullan, which is the end of the line that has the zigzag on it up near Kalamunda, if you're familiar with Western Australia. Um, and you can see there's like a layout, Perth at the top, Carrigullen at the bottom, and the zigzag bit in the middle. And of course, you can't have a layout of Western Australia without 3D printed emus. Well done there. One of the things I like about model railways, or models in general, is like the miniature little universes that they create. Like it's almost like physical role playing you can imagine yourself that dude in the blue overalls in that locomotive there waiting for the track to be clear so he could go or this guy sitting on the bales on the wharf waiting for the boat to come little worlds like what happened to this car why did the guy walk away and leave it who knows and this is z gauge which is even tinier than n gauge the tracks are 6.5 millimeters wide and this woman clearly has very good eyes and very steady hands this is Lionel O gauge, which is more of a toy than a model railway, but it's a magnificent toy. All the bits move, things load and unload, stuff moves around, and this is a very vintage set, which I'm sure is this guy's pride and joy. The Northern District's Model Engineering Society always come, and I've included this shot for Keith Appleton because, like, what's, what's, what's wrong with polished brass? Nothing's wrong with polished brass. There's also always a large contingent of radio controlled trucks because, you know, you know trucks kill trains so they're going to hide in the corner and mock everybody. 
and here we have some young people learning road rage and belligerence. Um, well, you know, generally, learn to be a hoon. And every year we buy something. This is what we bought this year. Hello, Duke of Edinburgh, and welcome to our household. This is a, a Dean single from the Great Western Railway, and here it is having its first run. Just pulling away nicely there. This is on the Churchwood Junction layout that we have in what used to be our dining room. Now it's our training room. Look at it go. What's not to love about this? We really need to do some more work on the scenery. Anyway, thank you for joining us this year. We'll post something again next year. <laughs>